You shot these pretty high, seven to 12,000 feet. Yep, so that was the goal. I mean, you know, um, I, I can't say that uh, pe people have obviously shot, I think, at night at lower altitudes, um, but at high altitudes, like 7,500 feet to 12,000 feet at night, there's no real, real record of that ever happening before. And you see an, an image like this of New York, and you get this incredible compression that looks like Sim City. Yeah. Uh, because you're using a 50 millimeter lens to capture all of Midtown Manhattan. And uh, it was pretty special. The coolest thing about this project was that the veteran pilots I was flying with were saying, I've never seen anything like this before. And they're flying every single day over these cities, whether it's Barcelona, London, New York, San Francisco. And when you hear a pilot say that, you know you've got something special because you're witnessing something that's rarely been seen before. And I'm getting goosebumps right now because it's very hard to discover something, quote unquote, in 2015 or to find a new image, if you will. Yeah. I've always been jealous of pilots because of the amazing view of the Earth uh, that they have. So it's amazing that you found stuff they'd never seen before. Um, are you mostly in a helicopter for this? All a helicopter. I, I love flying in planes because um, you work out of a small window and you're going, you know, well over 100 knots and just, it's very hard to work. Yeah. Uh, whereas a helicopter is just the ideal platform. Obviously, the uh, vibration is an issue. And you can see in those those video images, I have a gyroscope at the bottom uh, of the camera to help stabilize it. A steady cam, in effect. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it allows us to shoot down to 1 25th of a second, which is kind of crazy. But we've got to go that low. We're really pushing these sensors uh, to their limits. You couldn't photograph this two or three years ago with Interesting. digital cameras. Interesting. And also, don't forget, the cities themselves are changing. Um, their power grids are changing to LED lighting. That's why you see these blues and yellows yeah. and greens and magentas. They're much more colorful than they used to be, aren't they? Yeah. They are. They weren't. Yeah. They were all yellow five years ago, and yeah. in maybe five years from now, they'll be all blue. Right. So this is kind of the perfect storm. There's some mercury. There's some LED. There's a mix of uh, of everything in there, and I love the motion. Now, I, of course, in the book, we're talking about uh, the book Air. Uh, yeah. Uh, those are going to be stills. Um, yes. When you uh, are you going to continue to post videos? Because I love the motion. You know what this reminds me of, and I'm sure that they stole this from you. Apple's new screensaver in the Apple TV. Is it, is <laughs> no, <it? laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I may have been consulted at, about that at some point, but no more than that. You can't say any more than that. I, I can't, can't say anything. Yeah, of course you can. Uh, <laughs> Is the storehouse, uh, original storehouse stuff still up? Can I go see that? Uh, it's st it sure is. Uh, the best place to find the stuff right now is on Lafrey Air, because okay. storehouses change the way they've done things a little bit. It's harder to find. Oh. Uh, but if you just do Lafrey, L-A-F-O-R-E-T dot, uh, sorry, not dot, just air dot com, um, we have galleries of every city. Um, and That's it's great. a pretty cool way to kind of experience this. That's so cool. Just to and here's, I've never plugged a book before. <laughs> but here it is. Yes, this is what you're supposed to do. This Vincent. is how big it is. <laughs> you're supposed to hold it up. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a photojournalist, so I hate selling stuff. Uh, and, you know, I'm super proud of it because, you know, I'd really oh, gone into the... gorgeous. Uh, and I think so. you make a good point. You're never going to see these again. This is These are unique images. The yeah. cities are changing, and this kind of light is going to change. Oh, here's Barcelona. That's oh. what Barcelona looks like from... Look at the grid. Uh, it's amazing. It's called yeah. the example. It's supposed to be, this is old, uh, the old downtown yeah. Barcelona and above. And then the middle part is the kind of more modern one. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a pretty fascinating thing to see from up there. You can see La Ramblas as you go down the middle of the old town. Uh, right yeah, it, it's, you're seeing stuff. I mean, the coolest thing is you have planes actually landing underneath your feet. Wow. At the air, which is disconcerting. Yes. Uh, when you're up there. And you're just seeing a world in a very different way. Um, I can honestly say that um, you it's like taking a step back in life. When you take a step back in your own life, you somehow hopefully gain some better perspective. Uh, and the the other irony, besides the one we mentioned earlier, is that with aerial photography, it's somehow a little bit more intimate than one would think. Yeah. And you get a better perspective on your life, um, on how we relate to our environment as human beings, how we relate to one another. There's a plane landing yeah, underneath right us right there. Wow. Um, and you just see that the world's not as big as you think. Yeah. You don't see social economic differences. You don't see borders. You feel like you're part of something bigger. And I like to call social media anti-social media. I think we're actually a little bit more disconnected as human beings than we were a few years ago. And when I see something like this, at least to me, uh, it reminds me that we're not that different and we're all pretty connected and we're all responsible for it. That's why I called AIR, the Project AIR. It's that 
air doesn't belong to anyone. We all share it, and it doesn't matter where you come from. And uh, we're all responsible for it. I love that, Vincent. Okay, let me geek out just a little bit. Sure. You're shooting a 1D? What are you shooting? 1DX and the 5DS. Okay. 5DS, interesting. And yeah, that's... Go ahead. It, it, it's only in the very bright parts of the city because it's such a dense sensor that it's not going to do as well in low light as a right. 1DX, for example. Right. And uh, you said everything from 15 to 500. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, actually, we, it's more limited. It's a, everything from an 8 millimeter on the 8 to 15 to a 200 F2. We didn't go above 200. 200 now, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you're, uh, are you doing post-processing uh, a little bit or? Not much. The biggest question I get is how much post-processing do you do? And I would say about 15 to 30 seconds an image in Lightroom. Thanks. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing, um, uh, not the saturation, the... Clarity? Uh, a little clarity in there? Now the other one, the vibrance. Vibrance. So Love the, the vibrance. vibrance. Yeah. Love the vibrance. We bring the highlights down to give you a better dynamic range oh, to pull those highlights down. Yeah. Because uh, I'm actually overexposing these a little bit just to the breaking point of the sensor because most of the information is actually in the shadows. Uh, and then uh, we're pulling the degrees Kelvin, the color temperature, a little bit towards the blue. And that's it. There's no localized adjustments. All the photos you see on Laferay Air uh, it are completely full. First of all, they're all full frame. Yeah. Uh, not one of them is cropped, and which I take a lot of pride in because everything is shot with a prime lens up there. There's no zoom lenses; wow. are too dark. Wow! And uh, that takes a lot of coordination between myself, Mike, my assistant, as well as the pilot. And um, you know, they're full frame, shot with prime lenses, and, and there you go. You can see you know, the great variety between New York, and if you look carefully at that at that Berlin one, you can actually see. Uh, the difference in color temperatures. Mm, uh, that's yeah. east and west Berlin right Holy there. Holy cow. Kind of, little, yeah, even a little more 30, blue in the west Berlin, a little uh, more mercury in the uh, east Berlin. You wow. got it. So the wall's been down for 27 or so years, maybe 25, something like that. You can still see the remnants of it, and I find that pretty fascinating. Isn't that amazing? And, and these are cool. We did this. These are lithographs uh, because oh, nice. we're selling fine art prints at a gallery, oh. but they're very expensive, and they're not really accessible to most. So we did these really high-quality lithographs. So if you want to have something framed up in your wall... My, one of my favorite photographers, Henri Gatier-Bresson, I have a, a you know poster of his. I can't afford a print of his, right. but I definitely have a poster. Of course.